Didn't you know? Sonic Adventure 2 is the first installment in the open-world competitive racing game series, Sonic Adventure. It was Sonic's first ever transition into 3D, and is critically acclaimed for its fun gameplay, plethora of content, memorable soundtrack, and its deep, captivating story. Sonic Adventure 2 is famous for completely revamping the Sonic formula and making notable additions to the Sonic universe's lore. The main addition to the story was the inclusion of Shadow the Hedgehog, the racially divergent bio-android counterpart to Sonic the Hedgehog, who acts as the main antagonist and rival for Sonic during the first two story campaigns. Fans of Sega may notice that this isn't Shadow's first appearance in a GameCube title. Shadow the Hedgehog was based on Shadow the Hedgehog from Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube, a game where the player plays as Shadow the Hedgehog. Sonic Adventure 2 based many of its design choices off of Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube, such as the ability to choose between a hero and a dark story, the addition of a last story after completing both stories, as well as having Shadow the Hedgehog as a playable character. Another reference to Shadow the Hedgehog for the Nintendo GameCube is the military group introduced in this game game story, which is known by the name G-U-N, or Gun, a reference to Shadow the Hedgehog's infamous use of guns in Shadow the Hedgehog. Many of Sonic Adventure 2's features actually were derived from fan requests. The developers had frequently gotten fan mail after the release of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which would often contain things like fan art and game design requests. Two common requests that the developers received for Sonic's first 3D game were that they give Sonic a gun so that he could be cool and edgy, like Shadow the Hedgehog from Shadow the Hedgehog, and that Dr. Kintobor be a playable character. These two ideas were both very difficult to implement, however, as they didn't think that Sonic was edgy enough to use a gun, and Dr. Kintobor was having severe back problems during the game's development and was unable to walk. Eventually, they decided to mix the two concepts, putting Dr. Kintobor in a mech suit, allowing for him to get around levels without walking, as well as having gun-based gameplay. Fans would eventually get their wish and have the chance to play a Sonic wielding a gun in a future installment, however, known in America as Smash Bros. Brawl. Players may notice during gameplay that many of the level's backgrounds are actually just still real-world JPEG images. What you might not know, however, is that the head game designer, Masahiro Sakurai, actually did something similar for the Chow Garden. He used JPEGs for the background, as well as for the textures used in the garden itself. The Chow Garden's JPEGs are unique, however, as they are pictures that Sakurai took himself. The level design and textures used were based on Sakurai's trip to heaven, which God granted him after releasing Super Smash Bros. Melee. He explained it in a Sega Direct after the game's release. I absolutely loved it up there. There were beautiful angels all around, which is what I based the Chow off of. I asked God if I could take pictures of heaven to put in my game, and he agreed to it. He told me humanity should get another taste of heaven. Jesus even packed me a snack for the ride back. Real swell guy. A study done on gamers before and after playing for an hour in the Chow Garden revealed that God's plan had worked, as 92% of players who had initially thought there was nothing after death now believed in the possibility of a heaven. Many fans after the game's launch were surprised by the ending of Sonic Adventure 2, as it's the first Sonic game featuring the canonical death of a main protagonist. This decision, however, didn't last very long after the release of the game, due to the popularity of Shadow the Hedgehog. While they stuck with the story and left Shadow out of the sequel, Sonic Adventure, Fan Outcry eventually led them to retconning the ending and bringing Shadow back as a playable character in the reboot of the Sonic franchise, Sonic Heroes. The game was notably lighter in tone comparatively to prevent similar fan dissatisfaction from occurring again, though it didn't quite work out the way the developers had planned, as Sonic Heroes was never able to live up to literal heaven. Didn't you also know that Xenoblade Chronicles was based off of the original two Star Wars trilogies? If you want to know more trivia on Xenoblade and other obscure video game series, look out for the Didn't You Know Video Games episode on Xenoblade Chronicles. If you enjoyed this episode, remember to leave a like and press the subscribe button to show support. If you want the chance to see episodes a week before their release, consider checking out the Patreon. Thank you to the patrons who are currently supporting the channel on Patreon. And don't forget to look out for new episodes of Didn't You Know Video Games.